What if I told you there's a simple modification that could save you thousands in repair bills, boost your engine's power, and eliminate one of the most problematic systems on diesels? But here's the catch. It's also prohibited in most places and could land you with massive fines. Today we're talking about DPF Delete, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly why this modification has diesel owners divided. Let's get started. But before we do that, let's briefly explain what the DPF does and how the DPF Delete is performed. The DPF is short for Diesel Particulate Filter, which captures and stores exhaust soot to prevent harmful particles from being released into the atmosphere. Over time, the filter fills up and needs to go through regeneration to burn off the soot and keep your engine running efficiently. Now, let's talk about the DPF Delete, which as the name would suggest, eliminates it from the exhaust system. There are two ways of doing this. Physically removing the filter from the exhaust and replacing it with a straight pipe, or gutting the filter element while leaving the housing in place. But in any case, the end result is the same. The soot particles won't be filtered anymore. Now, the DPF Delete, like pretty much everything else, has its pros and cons, so let's see what they are. When speaking about the advantages of DPF removal, potential power gains definitely have to be at the top of the list. With the restrictive filter out of the equation, the engine will have better exhaust flow at its disposal, consequently increasing its output. That's of course, assuming the ECU gets updated to match the new conditions which is why most vehicles need a software tune after the DPF is removed. While the DPF system is good for the environment as it reduces air pollution, it also impacts fuel economy. In essence, as the filter creates back pressure in the exhaust system, your engine won't be as efficient as it could be. So by removing the DPF, you might see a small increase in gas mileage, typically around 5 to 10% in many cases. In most diesel-powered vehicles, the DPF may become clogged with soot, and this can create performance issues. The engine may run sluggish or enter limp mode to protect itself. If you eliminate the DPF, this won't be happening anymore. The DPF system, when it's working as it should, doesn't have a particularly negative effect on the engine. But as soon as something's off, it may be very expensive. Apart from the said clogging, the DPF may fail completely requiring replacement costs that can easily reach several thousand. And if the DPF is deleted, you won't have to worry about any of that. You know that famous Murphy's Law, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Well, if we follow the same logic, what isn't, there can't go wrong. So after deleting the DPF, you won't have to worry about clogged filters or expensive regeneration services anymore. This can make your car more reliable and save you serious money on repairs. At this point, removing DPF from your car may seem like a great idea. But there are, however, some downsides to this, with increased emissions being one of them. After all, the whole purpose of the DPF system is to make the exhaust gases less harmful to the environment. Sure, some of you will wave your arm and say, I don't care about that. But the fact is that your car may fail its emissions test, depending on how strictly it's done. If you remove the DPF system, Exhaust gases won't be filtered anymore. Instead, the engine will produce more visible emissions, particularly black smoke under acceleration, especially if the engine isn't tuned correctly. However, in most cars, this can be barely noticeable. Because the ECU doesn't know the filter is gone, it won't adjust properly, making the emissions worse. This is why once the DPF delete is performed, the ECU software has to be updated which can be complicated for some shops. In some cars, the engine's exhaust might become noticeably louder and smokier after the DPF system has been removed, which would be most noticeable during acceleration or heavy load. This, however, doesn't happen on all models. And even when it does, some owners actually prefer the sound. Still, even as such, it's worth mentioning. Last, but by no means least important, is the question of the legality of the whole procedure. The fact is that tampering with the DPF or any other emission control device is prohibited in most countries. So strictly speaking, your car won't be roadworthy if you've deleted the DPF, 
In some countries, there is some wiggle room when it comes to this. Sure, that might not stop you from removing the DPF system anyway. So this heavily depends on where you are in the world. There are three ways of doing the DPF delete, though the end result will be the same, stopping the soot from being filtered. The simpler option is to gut the filter element while leaving the outer housing intact. The filter material is removed from inside and the housing is welded back together. With all external components still in their places, the system will look completely stock. Another option is to remove all DPF hardware, including the filter housing and all interconnecting pipes. Once this is done, a straight pipe replaces the entire assembly. This gives the best flow, but is most obvious to spot. Apart from physically removing or gutting the filter, you'll have to update the ECU software so it can adjust the engine's running parameters to match the new conditions. Otherwise, you might have issues like error codes or reduced performance. In addition, if you remove the DPF hardware completely, various warning lights might appear. Lastly, 3 is a software-only method, which involves updating the car's ECU so it stops monitoring the DPF system entirely. This version works with the physical removal and can be the most effective approach. The bits and pieces needed for the DPF delete are not terribly expensive. In most cases, you'll need metal pipes or plates, which you can make yourself with some basic tools. Even if you buy a ready-made kit, it will set you back a few hundred to a thousand depending on your vehicle. The fitment is usually a straightforward job, assuming access isn't obstructed by other components. The all-important ECU software update, however, is a whole different story. If you have experience with tuning software, you could attempt it yourself, but if something goes wrong during this update, you could end up damaging the ECU. With that in mind, it may be better to have this done by a professional tuner, which could cost anywhere between 500 to 3000 depending on your vehicle and location. Before we wrap up, let's mention some alternatives to full deletion. DPF cleaning services can temporarily solve clogging issues for a few hundred. Driving habits can be changed to promote better regeneration, like high revs and highway, and avoid doing mainly short trips. So, there you have it. I hope that now, once you know all the upsides and drawbacks of the DPF delete, deciding whether you want this on your car or not will be easier. But I must point out once more, this procedure might not be allowed where you live. So make sure to check local regulations before doing anything. The truth about DPF delete isn't black and white. It's a calculated risk that might make perfect sense for your situation or could be the worst decision you ever make. Only you can decide which side of that line you're on. If you found this video on DPF delete informative, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Until next time.